Gibbs seems to be a guy who was basically locked in as the two uh, as far as running backs and maybe not, you know, maybe it was Bijan in a tier by himself and then kind of Gibbs in a tier by himself. And then and we start filling in the rest of them uh, from there. But it seems like all of a sudden there seems to be some Gibbs pushback of saying that maybe, maybe, you know, at least I see a lot of it of like, Hey, you know, I got, I got Gibbs dropping way down the board. Is there right. any reason for that? Why, why, first of all, you know, is any of that warranted or is it just basically somebody just saying, well, he's five eleven, two Oh one. And you know, we're, we're going to knock a guy like Spears and a chain and Vaughn for that, but we're not knocking Gibbs for that. You know? So what, what are your yeah. thoughts there? And, and give me, give me the breakdown on Gibbs. Cause I think, I think you're going to be very pro Gibbs if I had to guess. Yeah, he's my favorite player in this draft cycle, like mm-hmm. in offense or defense. Uh, him and like Sidney Brown is phenomenal, the, the, the safety from Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um, but geez, dude, Gibbs, Gibbs is an incredible playmaker. I mean, this is a, you don't get guys like this every single class, every single cycle. Um, I think the pushback is more so size related. If Gibbs was, if Gibbs lit, was listed at 210, right, then we would probably not see a lot of this. But People are trying to nitpick Gibbs' game because, well, he's not a great interior rusher. Um, you know, he doesn't profile as a guy who's going to touch the ball a lot. Okay, great. He touched the ball 15 plus time 61, in 61% of his career games. He breaks the, the threshold for an RB1. The debt threshold is 55%, right? We look at other guys in that same vein. Sharp Rainley touched the ball 15 plus times a game in 55% of his career games. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a player where the NFL offensive coordinators, hopefully like they were in college, want to get this guy the ball. Gibbs' skill set as a receiver is probably one of the more advanced receiving skills that we've seen in the last five, six years. We're talking about like a McCaffrey-like receiver. Not saying as a player, as a pure receiver, mm-hmm. right? This is where it's interesting because and almost 20% of Gibbs' snaps at Alabama, he lined up as a receiver, out wider in the slot. You don't see that. You don't see that number over 5% most of the time for a lot of these guys. We're do you think that number was 20%? It, do you think that was indicative of maybe Alabama's weaker, one of weak, one of the weaker wide receiver classes that they had? Or do you think that it's, it's you know, just that Gibbs is just that dude? Both. Uh, I think it's a, I think there was not a lot of guys stepping up in that receiver room. When I, when you watch them play, they lack that, you know, Jalen Waddle, Devante Smith, sure. you know, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, like all these dudes, Jamison Williams, you can go on. Um, they didn't have that talent at the pure position. However, the versatility of Gibbs is what that kind of speaks to for mm-hmm. me is you watch him. He, he wins out there. It's not right. like he just out there just, you know, just out, you know, out wide, just saying hi, and you know, being split out and 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 you know, five wide. Let's say, no, he's out there winning against nickels. He's he's winning against corners, uh, and he's doing it with only like one. I think he only has like two or three career drops on all of his targets. Mm-hmm. Like this is a guy who catches the ball. Like he's not just a like a space eater out there. Um, and I think too, they, they, you want to ski, that's how you scheme him up is you use him as that movable chess piece, kind of like how the 49ers have used McCaffrey. That was one thing that drove me nuts about Carolina is McCaffrey was so good as a traditional receiver. You can see that in the skill set, but it's all angle routes, ops routes. So that's fine. Right. That's where a guy like Kamara made a lot of his money Mm -hmm. is angle ops routes with Drew Brees. I mean, all day couldn't cover the man. But you have a guy like McCaffrey, you can line up a receiver and win. That's right. kind of Gibbs in terms of his skill set as a receiver, as a runner. That's where it gets really interesting. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of a Reggie Bush to his game as a runner, right? We have the get me outside, and then let me make good decisions. Reggie Bush, terrible decision maker. That was one. That was his big downfall, right? He he didn't have, I would say, the cognitive skill set to slow the game down down as a runner. Right when things were kind of muddy, Gibbs does, and that's when you see his efficiency numbers bump way up when they're outside the tackles. Right, he's really good at reading out to in, and that's where if he gets into a wide zone scheme like Miami, 
But McDaniel, that's a perfect, perfect fit. Yeah. Because born out can, of the San Fran. Yeah. Kind of system. That, that's this exactly that's the that's the scheme he needs because he's great at reading leverage when he's outside. Inside, he's a good decision maker, but he's not he doesn't he's not as force driven as you want those guys to be. Um that's where it's interesting to me when we talk about Gibbs is well, he's a bad runner. No, he's not. He's a great runner. Yeah. Very instinctual, high love movement intellect. He's just not built to run in between the tackles. That's just not. It's it's like when Pete Carmichael used Alvin Kamara <laughs> sure. as a between the tackles grinder. No, that's not how we. That's not how you utilize these guys who are so prolific in space and so great at reading leverage outside to in. So right. for you me, you want to throw one of those or a few of those in the game to keep the defense honest to know right. that it's it, there's a chance that he can go in there. Right. For sure, but you doesn't need to be a habit. Uh, exactly right, and this is he pro, gives profiles better in a high volume passing offense, mm-hmm. right? Who's going to utilize their running back also as Eckler. that? Yeah, sure, exactly. Um, Eckler benefited from having no receivers with with Allen and mm-hmm. Williams out for a period of time, but um, but yeah, I think even more so, just getting him in the slot, right? Getting getting Gibbs out wide, right? Giving him design touches getting the ball in his hands in different ways. I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing more of the Debo Samuel type of playmaker, right? Um, in NFL offenses. And it's funny because Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, if you watch the Niners recently, they're used kind of interchangeably. Yeah. Well, that's, right? that's, that's the idea. That's where everybody thinks they want to go. They want to be multiple, right? versatile, right. kind of move it around. It's, and, it's, and there you go. Yeah. Gibbs is perfect for that. And yeah. to, to what kind of you were saying before about the Niners, and Carolina and Carolina driving you nuts. Like the Niners didn't really use their running backs like that, but Mm -hmm. you know, you got to give them what you got to get right. You got to give them credit for, Hey, we didn't just come in here and then fit him right back into the system. We, 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 we then came and saw the strengths of what, we can do and how we can do right. this, which is kind of, I'm sure what they've always wanted to do. They wanted Trey Lance to again, be even more multiple, but it hasn't quite worked out yet. And I think For that's sure. part of, you know, the problem when you get guys like this is if he goes to the wrong place, that isn't going to build, you know, I like James cook just fine. I think he showed, you know, nice, at the end of the season, it was ramping up and yeah. being pretty good. But the problem with the Bills were is their inability for whatever reason. They keep getting these decent running backs, but then they never really build their game into their system. They just keep yeah. kind of doing what they're doing. So and if yeah, if, it's tough. If you get man. that you you know if you get the wrong person who's just going to keep trying to jam Gibbs into the skill set that he doesn't use, right. which is kind of versatile to pretty much any player, but seems a little bit more specific to a player like Gibbs that he needs to go to the right coach, yeah. the right system. That's going to say, Hey, no, we're, we're, we're not going to just, you know, run, run you like right. Alvin Kamara got ran. You, you know, you could see the difference between Sean Payton and the way they're going to use, uh, Alvin Kamara to the way that Carmichael right. used Alvin Kamara and it was just right. night and day. Yeah, I know exactly. Right. And that's, you hit the nail on the head. It, it's all about, you know, how these guys are used, right? Usage. It matters for any player. Look at Kamara McCaffrey. Like these are high level running backs, but the difference between San Francisco and Carolina was strictly his usage purely as a receiver. <laughs> like, this is where it makes a difference as a as a runner you obviously you see some variation in terms schematically with the wide zone and shanahan scheme but as a receiver this is a guy who was in the slot was out wide running routes versus corners awesome like that's right. what he does that's what right. he does really well at the position and that's what makes him so valuable as a player um and hopefully the nfl you know nfl evaluators and, and general managers say oh this is a guy with jameer gibbs has a similar skill set to that let's draft him in the late first round because we have a multi-positional threat people say right. running back shouldn't be drafted in the first round he had a running back right he, he is this new era of player that can play two positions right imagine if we knew debo samuel was debo samuel mm-hmm. he'd be a top 15 pick top 10 right. pick Right? right. So that's what we're looking at is guys who can play two positions. Obviously, obviously very different than Debo in terms of skill set size. Sure. But guys who can play more than one position and also understand the nuance of both of those. That's super important. Right. Play that position. You think, at a he, high you think level. he does that? Well, yeah. 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 Very well. And I think that's what you, you know, you look at a guy that can, you know, read defender leverage and, you know, actually be a traditional receiver you want to you at this stage if you get a running back you can leave out 
in the slot or on an island out wide. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. Is a passing league. You're, right. not beating the, you're, not be, you're not beating the Kansas City Chiefs running the ball 30 times a game. Yeah. That's not I mean, how you're doing it. Just look what, you know, just, the, the, you know, the McKinnon, you kind of touched on, I don't know if it was here or off air, you know, look at how that usage really, you know, just he, he's, he's kind of, we, we kind of saw it. McKinnon was an early guy who we thought that could be somebody like a Gibbs and just, he went to San Fran and got injured and then never really worked out. And finally seems at, at age 30 now, mm-hmm. uh, seemed seem to kind of get the usage that, you thought or used in the way that you thought he would be most effective. Yeah. And, and he was um, yeah. very effective. He looked great out there. And, and, mm-hmm. you know, Gibbs is 20. He's not, he turns 21 in a yeah, couple of know, months. Right? He's super young yet. Um, and really did, you know, two seasons at Georgia tech was, was fine. And, but then goes to the sec on Bama and yeah, he's on Bama, but he gets better in every, in pretty much every category. Um, you yeah. Know, more usage, he, the, the yards, per attempt go up the tds go up the targets go up the attempts go up the number the the yards go up everything goes up and you know Mm -hmm. again on on bama but again playing much better competition um so you know i I don't i don't really understand the the slight of gibbs right now besides just being a a a weightist um yeah it's interesting i I don't know it's uh it's funny because you look at guys who can impact him in multiple ways he does it in three ways runner receiver kicker turner Mm -hmm. um these you're going to want to get the ball in his hands, man. I mean, and that's that's what it comes down to is you want players you want to give touches to. You don't just want the, you know, the era of the Jordan Howard type players is kind of over, right? Right. The, all right, I'm going to turn around and hand the ball off to you, but that's all I can really do with you, right? Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're not a great receiver. You're not going to impact the return game at all. Okay. That doesn't happen. It's 2023 that these guys right. are used in more of a, you know, position list element. Um, you, you get Jamal Williams is where, you know, you know, you, you get sure. sort of goal line usage and, and, you know, he's, he's a pretty good player. I don't, I don't he know. Is he is a great player. Great player. I mean, that's your Kendra Miller's in this class, man. Mm-hmm. And th- th- those are your guys that can be that type of player. Your Jamal Williams hit the nail on the head. That's really who a guy like Kendra Miller can be. He can be that, you know, like the 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 engine of a running back, the, the engine of a running back room, I should say, right? This is the guy that's going to be, you know, the energy giver. So they're going to wear down teams. That's him, right? It's it's Williams versus Swift. Swift is unequivocally the more talented player, but Williams is the more productive one because he gets goal line touches. Do, and do Swift you think, hasn't been healthy. Do you think like a player like DeAndre Swift – you know, is maybe who was so coveted there for, for a minute here and now is, has been oft injured and, you know, people are seemingly to fall off him because he has been playing. You think that's hurting Gibbs a little bit in the fantasy owner's eyes? Um, maybe I just, I think they're very, there's extremely different type of players, right? Okay. You, you know, in a guy like Swift, you wanted his usage to be, more receiver than runner, but he can't hold up as a runner at all. That's the issue. The shoulder thing as a, as a rookie, we saw it against the bears. I believe it was ever since then it's you're, he's missing four, four games a year, right? This is not going to be somebody to be on the field for 16, 17, 18 games. Um, he's not going to make it. That's just who he's, that's how he's built. Um, it's not because of his size. He's 212 pounds, 5'9". That, that's plenty stout enough mm-hmm. to hold up to an NFL workload and when guys way lesser than that um, have. So and that's the, the issue is people are kind of pigeonholing Gibbs into, okay, DeAndre Swift, he hasn't been that effective. Well, he hasn't been on the field. That's well, I would, I would argue that he's been extremely effective when he is on the field. Yeah, he just, right. Good. That, that would be kind of my, what I was kind of more leading towards is that, Hey, maybe he's not the biggest guy and maybe usage wise, that's kind of what you would want. The way they use Swift sure. would be, I would think what you kind of want from Gibbs, like mm-hmm. some runs, but passing game and just extremely efficient when he does get his touches and just yeah. looks like a menace out there. Yeah, uh, in a way, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely correct. I think in a way, I, I think really more so the dream usage is, is um, as a receiver, it's Christian McCaffrey. As a rusher, yeah. you can definitely, definitely utilize like DeAndre Swift, Jarek McKinnon even, um, where you're getting seven, eight, nine rushes a game, but also you are a guy who's getting targeted six, seven times a game, right? 
and that's kind of what you what you right. envision. If Gibbs if Gibbs averages five six receptions a game, he's probably going to be a fantasy RB one RB two yeah. at the worst. Um, and that's what you're really looking at is a guy who provides that element of the offense because one of those one of those receptions could go for sixty five yards. Right. That's the difference with Gibbs and Gibbs and Swift is I Gibbs has you know he has the 22 mile an hour horsepower, right? He has, he's a formula one car, right? He Mm -hmm. can score on any single touch. Um, Swift is a good accelerator, lacks top end speed. Um, Both are gifted laterally, but Gibbs is a guy you can, you know, you, you watch the game. I think it was against, uh, I'm not against Tennessee. Um, Just lit it up. I mean, we're talking two 65 plus yard touchdowns in less than a quarter. Um, he was after, he was a lot of their offense. Yeah, after Bryce Young went down, it was yeah. like, all right. Turn and give the ball to Jameer, hope, and then or like get him in space and hope he you know hope he does well. But he did, um, right. and that's what I look for too in, in running backs. If the situation is very non advantageous, you have a guy like Jalen Milrow back there, quarterback. Does not offer you much at all, <laughs> sir. Right, right. So you're playing another top fifty. So it's interesting to see when you look at a guy like Gibbs, how he can impact a game when it's just him. You have to be the guy in Cotton. And that's kind of what we saw from Gibbs um, in flashes when, when, when Bryce Young was, was off the field, right? So yeah. he was the guy for that offense, and he was for that stretch of games um, and did really well. I mean, you, you, saw, you saw the big playability. You saw how they can rely on a guy like him. And the reliance is important because that's, you know, we get into Bigsby and, you know, Bigsby and Evans and not all that reliable. And that's yeah. really what it comes down to is you're asked in the NCAA to be the guy sometimes. And if you want to be a high level NFL player, you almost have to be the guy in college yeah. in stretches at least. And that's what we saw from Gibbs. We saw that from Bajan. We saw that from Deuce Vaughn. You know, they, those dudes were the a chain to mm-hmm. the guy. And that's yeah. why I think a lot of those dudes can be successful in the NFL because they've already proved that. Right. So, so are you, would you leave, let's say we're call, we're talking super flex. Um, uh, would you put, would you take, I guess it really doesn't matter. Super flex. Would you take Gibbs over all the wide receivers in the class? Whew. Depends on, depends on, what I need JSN mm. super safe, right? Mm. We talk, we can talk a little bit about receivers. Absolutely. I think JSN super safe. I think he's going to be a Keenan Allen plus type workload guy in terms of where he wins. <clears throat> he's, he's a pure slot receiver. Yeah. You'll say he can win out wide. He can just wasn't asked to doesn't have the athletic capability to really beat you vertically. He's going to be mm. with more nuance. It's kind of like if you combine Keenan Allen and Marvin Jones jr. Mm. That's kind of who he is. Which is a pretty damn good football player. Yeah. Um, and I think you're gonna he's gonna be a top fifteen, top sixteen wide receiver every single year of his career, including as a rookie, if he's healthy. Um I would say that's a toss up. It's really like no, not to be a cop out, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the upside of Gibbs is you're getting a top five running back. I think the downside is you might get a guy who's a pigeonhole him to be an R B two because his offense doesn't score enough. Um, JSN is going to be super safe every year. If it's up to me, I'm probably going to take JSN just because it's like you, you want to hit on your first round picks. Right. right? You want to hit on those guys you're taking at 104, 103, 105. Um, and I, would, I, I feel super safe about JSN. Um, Quentin Johnson, that's my wide receiver too. I would take Gibbs over Johnston. I, I think Johnson could very well get into an NFL offense that can't throw the ball down the field. And he's screwed. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, look at Drake London. Holy shit. <laughs> like, like, what are you going to do? Like, that's the thing is like, it's bad quarterback play versus, and also we're not scheming a passing attack. Yeah. Like, they're, that's what they're, the, that's they're what a run first Falcons offense, <laughs> run first offense, like Tennessee, Traylon Burks. Just going to muddy it up and, it, and <laughs> bingo, man. Traylon yeah. Burks looked awesome in flashes this year mm-hmm. with, when he was on the field but man 
I mean, that sucks. Like you're running the yeah. ball with Derrick Henry 30 plus times, you know, 25, 30 plus times a game. You have all your quarterback issues. You go from Josh Dobbs, Malik Willis, who can't be successful consistently, right? So right. Um, my fear is that Johnson goes in situations similar to London, Burks, and is going to be really hard pressed to improve as a rookie yeah um i do think you know overall i think a guy like johnson has the most upside in this class at any position i mean he's an absolute absolute freak of a mover in terms of what he does at 6'4 215 pounds and after the catch and he can win on all three levels my issue is he's not a great level two receiver struggles across the middle of the field um that's where a large majority of his drops were um but i do think that he can develop into one of the NFL's premier three level threats, um, as well yeah, as yeah, I, I love him with the ball in his yeah. hands. Oh, he's I love incredible. Him with the ball in his yeah, hands. He, he's he's some, yeah, it, it, it's kind of rare to see a guy like that. Just don't make him like that. Yeah, no, 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 right. And, and, and that's what the NFL is going to be enamored with, you know, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think he, I think he's, I think he's like going to be a top 15 pick, yeah, top 20 pick. Yeah, um, wouldn't be surprised if he's the first receiver off the board for sure. So Gibbs, Gibbs. Uh, behind JSN, but slightly over Quentin Johnson. Right. All right. Fair enough.